everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got a two for one video for you today on this lead time 3500 watt inverter. Got plenty of your requests and questions to go through the setup and programming menu on this inverter. So I'm gonna cover that today and also give you an honest long-term update on this inverter. So if you're interested in learning more and finding some valuable and honest feedback on this inverter, you found the right video. Let's get right into it. So before I go through the programming menu and settings on the lead time inverter, I want to give you my honest long-term feedback on this machine right here. I installed it in November of 2024. It is now July of 2025. And I'll just summarize it in one word, flawless. This inverter has not complained, not faulted, not error coded, not overheated, anything like that. It's done everything I've asked it to do. You know, that's my honest feedback. So let me go over the program settings on this inverter and then I will discuss some of the drawbacks of this inverter later in the video. Now for the visual monotony portion of today's video, bear with me, this is not exciting. This is just going through settings. So the camera angle is gonna stay right here. So here we go, I'm gonna go through the settings I've been using on this inverter. So go over here to the set menu. The first point right here in the menu is zero zero, which is the exit mode setting. So I will go up from that one and then setting number one i've got that on for output modes that is on solar uh, that's mppt first which is what it's doing it's charging off of solar it'll switch to the grid when the pv uh, fails or the battery voltage is lower than my set points but my grid option is manual with 12 volt inverter so that's what i've got on that setting right there all right setting number two is of course the frequency that i'm using and north america i'm using 60 hertz so you can change that if you want to but uh, I've got it at 60 Hertz. So setting three, I have in UPS mode, which is a tighter voltage control. Uh, I'd recommend you stick with that. Setting number four, battery power to grid power. This is where the battery voltage will switch to the grid. So 50 volts is what I've got that set at. I think the factory setting's like 49 something. I just put it at 50 volts just for a placeholder number. Like I said, my grid switching is manual. I've got to turn on a breaker. All right, setting number five, grid power to battery power. So if your voltage is higher than the set point in this menu, which I've got this set at 54.4, the output will switch from grid back to battery. So this is, if you're grid charging, you'll, it'll charge up and at this setting, it'll run back off the battery to correspond to a setting I'll show you later in this. Number six is the charging modes. I've got this one on the factory setting of SNU. That is a combination of MPPT, solar, and grid charging. And that's why I've got this set up. It works pretty good. You can put solar first, or you can switch to grid charging only, whatever floats your boat. All right, number seven setting. That is the max charging for PV plus AC. I left it at the factory setting of 80 amps. You can change it to whatever suits your needs, depending on your battery bank capacity, your supporting hardware, you know, your PV, your grid, things like that. So I just left it on the factory setting. And then battery type, which is setting number eight, L16 because it's a 16S 51.2 volt lithium iron phosphate system. Setting number nine, the boost charge voltage. The factory setting on this is 56.8. I've got it set at 56. I charge a little higher than a daily cycling battery bank, which I usually set at 55.2. Uh, there's plenty of information out there on different charge voltages per cell. I just put this at 56 volts. And then setting number 10 is the boost charge duration time. The factory setting is 120 minutes on this. I turned it down to 60 minutes and that's the maximum charge time to reach the setting voltage code during the constant voltage phase. So once the batteries get up to 56 volts, it will hold that voltage there for 60 minutes or until the current tapers down. So I just left it at 60 minutes, it works fine. Number 11 is the float charging voltage. 54.4 uh, is what I've got it set at, you know, 53.8, 54.0, 54.2, whatever floats your boat. Uh, I said more, there's plenty of research out there. You pick your own cell voltage. So 54.4 is what I got it set at. Number 12 is the low voltage disconnect. The factory setting is 48.8 and that's what I've got it set at. That's where the output from the inverter will turn off if your battery goes below this setting right here. So number 13 is the over discharge delay time. 
So you can set it from anywhere from five seconds to 50 seconds. I just set it, left it at the factory of 30 seconds. So that's if you hit a big surge or something and you make a voltage droop, it'll delay it out before it actually kicks the inverter output off. So 30 seconds is I've got it set on that. Number 14 is the under voltage warning. Uh, the factory setting on this one's like 49.6. I just put it at placeholder of 50 volts. That just lets you know you got an alarm or a fault right here when things are going on. Uh, tells you that your battery voltage is low, so 50 volts, which I don't ever drag them down that low unless I'm doing just an independent battery test. So number 15 is the discharge limit. So you can set this from 38 to 50 volts, whatever floats your boat. Battery setting on this is 46.4. I just put it at 48. I don't really care to drag my batteries down below that. So number 22 is the eco mode. I've got that disabled. I want the inverter on. You can save some power in eco mode. It'll sit there and search the AC output for a load. I don't like running my inverters like that. This personal choice right here. So I disabled that. So instead of pulling 25 or 30 watts with it in search mode, it pulls between 55 and 60 uh, with this mode, which is fine with me. Number 23, overload automatic start. I've got that enabled. So if you put a big load on here and it can't start the load, it'll try again. So it'll do like five attempts or something like that. I've never had that problem, but I've left it enabled. And then I over 24 is over temperature, automatic start. So if an over temperature situation occurs, you overheat the inverter, it'll try to restart itself. Number 25, the buzzer alarm. This setting is this thing beeps and carries on every time you turn on, turn it off. This is the setting you will pay attention to. I've got that disabled, it'll stop all that beeping. The only beeping you'll hear is when you touch the buttons, you won't have any alarm indicators, things like that. Number 26, the mode transition alarm. Uh, that lets you know that if it switched from grid power to MPPT or battery back and forth, you know, it'll tell you that. I left that enabled. You know, you can turn that on or off, no big deal. Uh, number 27 is the bypass output. I've got that enabled, so it'll switch to grid when the inverter's overloaded, but I've never overloaded the inverter, so no big deal. You can enable or disable that. I don't see that affecting your operation too much. Number 28, the maximum AC charging current, this is coming from the grid, and that is current to the battery, not from the grid or whatever, that's your DC current. I've got it set at 20 amps because I'm using a 12 volt inverter to charge back to this system for my grid. Uh, just limited it down that way it's you know does overload the 12 volt inverter i can still use it for other things you can set this up to 40 amps and the factory setting is 40 amps i just preferred 20. number 29 supply for a transformer output i don't have a transformer hooking this thing too so i've got that disabled and then setting 30 serial of parallel machines it's not functional on this inverter so just factory setting of one right there and BMS communications, I've got it, the factory is 485, which would be this setting right here. I've got it on that setting right there, which is do not communicate with BMSs. I've turned that on and off when I'm tinkering around with batteries and things. So you know, that's why I've got it set at is disabled. Setting number 33 is the BMS communication protocol. Uh, that's LT, that's lead times protocol. So they want you to buy their complex batteries, communicate with them which I'm using mostly dumb batteries or not even hooking up communication. So there's that. So boost charge recovery voltage. This is the level of the battery, the voltage of the battery you have to drop down to before it will reinitiate charging on PV or grid. 53.2, the factory setting is 53.6. This is one of the set, there's a setting in here. If you change your, like you saw my boost voltage and things like that, if you've got your boost voltage set low, it won't let you set this as high. This is a, it's got a pre-programmed differential between this and the boost. So I would normally have this at like 53.6 or something like that, but just the differential, I have to have it at 53.2. Number 38 is the AC output voltage setting. You can pick 100 volts, 105, 110, 120. Of course, North America, 120 volt. And then back around through the menu. So that's my settings on this lead time inverter. So I hope some of those settings, you know, were helpful, maybe clarified some things. People that had some questions or issues with different settings, or if you've not bought this inverter and on the fence about buying it, maybe you could see how easy it was to set up. Now let me talk about the drawback to this inverter, what I wish they would change. I wish they would offer this where they could, we could parallel it together. We could have two 
and have 120, 240 volt split phase. Now that would be awesome. I wish that lead time would do that. I think they would sell a lot more of these inverters and be a lot more popular, but overall efficiency wise and operation, it's quiet. Uh, just It just works good, but remember it's just 120 volts. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Any other questions or anything about this inverter, please let me know in the comment section down below. I will try my best to help you out, help answer any questions or any kind of setup questions on this lead time inverter. I said several months running this thing. I like it. And if you're interested in looking further into this, I have some links to other videos I've done with this inverter and I'll have a link in the video description down below if you want to check out current pricing, things like that. And if you're looking for a 240 volt split phase inverter, check back soon. I might have you something that's budget friendly and helpful. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care. Be safe. I will see you on the next one.